Well, hello, friends on YouTube. This is Nathan Lawrence, Good News Tree Service, certified arborist, uh, Good News Tree Service in Wilsonville, Oregon. And uh, I'm also known as the Tree Evangelist, preaching the good news of trees and tree preservation. So we're going to talk about tree preservation today. There is a new pest in town, and we're going to wage holy war on that pest. It's not a human pest, it's a little insect. You know, most of the insects out there are, are beneficial, uh, and we need insects. But every once in a while, an insect comes along that wants to harm our trees, and this is one of those. It's called the, maybe you've heard about it on the news, it's been all over the place in the last year or so, not quite a year, in the Portland area. It's called the emerald ash borer. It's a beetle. It's, uh, we'll put a picture of it in, in the video here, but it's a little beetle that wants to get in and kill these ash trees. And there are a lot of ash trees all around the Portland area. They're very common as a street tree. Um, I've identified about 800 ash trees just in the local area, uh, right around where our our shop, our, our yard, our business is located, and that's just in two local areas. So there's a lot of these, and they're actually right here in Wilsonville, there's a whole grove of these trees. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a common area of a homeowners association, and there's an ash tree behind me. We'll take a look at that a little bit closer, a little bit. But the emerald ash borer is a beetle that has finally made its way into the Portland area. Now I'm going to give you information about this little beetle and uh, I'm going to give you supporting evidence. I'm not going to be promoting fear tactics. I'm not going to be promoting anything that is that is hearsay or secondhand information. I'm going to list all the sources uh, at the end of this video uh, or on the um, on this on my YouTube channel where you can go from official government sources from the Oregon Department of Agriculture, from the um, Oregon State University uh, Extension Service, from the Oregon Department of Forestry, and everything I am saying is backed up and has been put out by these officials in the last few uh, few months. So, um, again, no fear tactics, but I'm just stating the fact that this beetle is on target to kill all I don't mean some, I mean all of the ash trees in this area and it's spreading quickly. This is not fear tactics or alarm, well it is alarm, but already the emerald ash borer has killed over more than a hundred million ash trees back in the Midwest, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes area, all the way to the East Coast up into New England where ash trees are very, very prevalent, both as a native tree and as, a, as an introduced non-native species. And now the ash tree has made it uh, it's to North Dakota, it just recently got there, and we have, been, we have been anticipating that the emerald ash borer would make it to Oregon, to Northwest Oregon, to Portland. We've been anticipating this for uh, Oregon State University and the uh, Oregon Department of Agriculture and the Forestry Department have been anticipating this for several years. Well, it finally made it uh, in, the, in, the, in the Portland area. Uh, they identified, uh, the state of Oregon identified about 230 ash trees that have been infected with another 30 or 40, if I remember correctly, in the area that are probably affected. And if uh, the, experts, the, the experts tell us that if these trees have been infected and they're showing signs of dieback, that means the beetle came here two years ago, and that also means that it has now spread throughout the area, and we'll talk more about that. So the emerald ash borer goes against all species of ash, ash trees. The botanical name uh, for ash is Fraxinus, F-R-A-X-I-N-U-S. You can look it up. There are non-native um, species such as this here, there are several non-native species that are very common as street trees and yard trees uh, all over this area, as well as we do have the, the northern, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the native Oregon white ash, which grows all over the place in western Oregon, in riparian areas, in, in, along streams and river banks and, and, and swampy areas and wet areas. It's a native tree. This, All of these trees are 
open to infestation by this beetle. Now this beetle is a beautiful little beetle. It's an emerald green color. It's only about so big and it's real narrow. Again, I'll put a picture up there of it. And so I want to give you some information. I'm going to say that there is no, um, there is no natural predator for the emerald ash borer. There is no natural defense. Uh, the emerald ash borer came into this country uh, f f about 20 years ago, and they've been fighting it like crazy back east in the, like I say, in the Great Lakes area. The, uh, upper Midwest, the Midwest, all the way to uh, to Colorado, all the way to the East Coast, and uh, the universities and the scientists have been working trying to find uh, natural pests, natural ways to to protect their trees, protect all of our trees from this emerald ash borer. Uh, but there's nothing that can be done that science has discovered yet. The only thing that can be done if you want to save your ash tree is to we'll talk about this in a minute, is to inject it with a particular kind of insecticide, which I, Good News Tree Service, we're certified arborists, and we have commercial pesticide applicators licenses with the Oregon Department of Agriculture, and we have the specialized equipment to actually inject the tree, uh, your tree uh, or any tree, with, with a special, a very unique, um, non-toxic, bee-friendly, um, systemic insecticide that will protect your tree for several years. So we're going to talk about that. So, um, and then we're going to answer some uh, questions that many people have about the emerald ash borer. That's just kind of the overview right now. So um, the emerald ash, ash fair or emerald ash borer, uh, according to Oregon Department of Agriculture, is considered, in their words, a highly destructive, destructive invasive forest pest. Not only the trees in the forest, but also the trees in the urban areas that we see here. Once, a tr once a, the ash tree or the emerald ash borer, it's a beetle, gets into your ash tree, you only have several years to be able to, to treat it and save your tree. So uh, it gets, it, 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 the, the emerald ash borer spreads uh, they don't know exactly how it spreads. So when I say they, I'm talking about the scientists. I have sat in a, in a couple seminars uh, uh, and conferences where the, the top, some of the top officials, uh, scientists, professors, researchers from like the University of Wisconsin and as, as well as municipal foresters who have been treating this for years, like in the, in the Great Lakes area where, where they have come and shared their evidence and their research. So we're, we're getting good information here because this, is, this, this pest has been being um, combated and many things have been tried. And now, now that it's come to our area, we know what works because of 20 years of, of research and, and trial and error and all of that kind of stuff. So now we can dial in and get right to the heart of the matter and deal with the issue. But the emerald ash borer spreads. Um, it's suggested it spreads by a movement of firewood, but that's doubted probably a little bit, but mostly it's suspected that it, it actually, the, the beetle will get on vehicles, trains, automobiles, whatever, and, and, and fly and land and then get carried that way. Um, they, they do fly uh, and they're, they're, you know, they're pretty good flyers. They can fly a few miles, maybe up to 15 miles in search of another tree to infect and lay their eggs in. And then it's the actual, the grub, the beetle grub that gets inside of the tree and begins to eat away at the vascular system. We'll talk more about that later and eventually kills the tree one, one limb at a time. So uh, this is why it is a great concern that you decide what you want to do with your ash tree. Do you want to remove it? Do you want to keep it? If you want to keep it, then you're going to need to treat it. Otherwise, it's going to die, and we'll, and, and there goes uh, a, a good tree in your yard. So we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So the first two years that a, that a beetle infests your tree, you, um, you won't even see it. You will not see the symptoms on your tree. 
And again, we'll talk about the symptoms in a minute because there are evidences. And once you see the symptoms in the tree, that means that the beetle has already been in the tree for a couple of years, doing its damage surreptitiously under the bark of the tree. So um, that's why it's really important to get this information and to, to be uh, aware uh, and on guard and alert so that you can be ready, uh, ideally proactively, to, to treat your tree. But the moment you see any signs and symptoms, you can treat your tree. And the experts tell us that uh, as long as a tree is less than 25 to 30 percent defoliated, uh, if it's more defoliated than 25 or 30 percent, it's too late. It's a lost cause. Don't even just get rid of your tree. But if it's if you start seeing branches dying back and leaves are not coming out on them and they're dying, it's called dieback. And and 70 to 85, a 70, 75 to uh, 70 to 75 percent of the tree is still viable, still green. There's time to treat it. So, as I said, the emerald ash borer attacks all species of ash trees, and there's nothing anybody can do. It doesn't matter if your ash tree is healthy, if it's stressed and sick, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just throw this one in. The, the, uh, bronze bur uh, the um, emerald ash borer is a cousin of the bronze birch borer. They, they're a very similar beetle, except they're the same body shape, about the same length. Um, and but except the bronze birch borer is a bronze color, and the the um, emerald ash borer is a is an emerald color. But they're cousins. Uh, the state the state entomologist with the Oregon Department of Forestry, she told me a few years ago uh, we were looking at some trees that they're actually cousins and they're very related, so very similar. And we've had the bronze birch borer in this area for about 10 or 12 years and has killed probably about 60% of the birch trees. And it's a very, very lethal pest as well. So they're very similar. Uh, so some of you may already be familiar with the bronze birch borer if it's already killed uh, uh, some of your birch trees in your yards or you've seen dead birch trees around with broken dead branches falling apart and all that. Well, the, the um, uh, emerald ash borer uh, acts in the same way except it's actually more lethal it's it's it the tree the trees will not survive and it goes after all all kinds of trees no matter what their their state is i've talked to state officials on this and they assume because it's been found in the portland area and because it travels um by um by you know, as a hitchhiker on vehicles, and maybe even by firewood. They've actually put a quarantine around Washington County. I think this would be the Oregon Department of Agriculture uh, has put a quarantine, no firewood or any of that kind of thing. And then they're, they're, they're dealing with the trees that they have found. But they know it, it has already escaped. And they figure that by now, it is moving down the I-5 corridor with great rapidity. If, if it isn't already there. And this is what they tell us. This is what they've, they've, I've heard come from their mouths, what they, what they say. How quickly will the bronze birch borer kill your tree? Four to six years. It depends when your tree was infested, but if you start to see already dieback, and let me just talk real quickly about the symptoms. You'll start to see your ash tree um, start to see branches. I'm not talking about little branches. I'm talking about major branches on the exterior of the crown begin to die. And uh, when that happens, that means your tree has already been infested for at least two years. And you have maybe two or three more years at the most before your tree is dead. So that's why it's important that you, if you have an ash tree, and we'll talk about how you can tell if you have an ash tree or not, uh, but if you have an ash tree, you need to be armed with this information and you need to, you, you'll, you're going to need to uh, decide what you want to do. Now, some of you may decide to remove the tree and you figure, okay, you know, it's not worth it, especially if it's a small tree. And that's, that's, that's a very viable option. Uh, but if you have a larger tree that's providing shade for your house and is adding aesthetic value to your house, you, you might want to consider uh, treating it, having us treat that tree. And we'll talk about the costs and, and how, how easy that is to do shortly. Uh, so what are, the, what are the signs of the uh, 
emerald ash borer that your tree has been infected. The outward visible signs. Well, like I've already mentioned, you can see the crown. Now, the, this tree is not dead. This We're, we're making this video in, in uh, the middle of March, and the leaves haven't come out yet. But anyway, so this tree is alive, uh, but we'll talk about uh, how to identify an ash tree here in a bit. But you'll start to see dieback on the tree. Then you'll start to see D-sized, capital D-sized exit holes. So what happens is the beetle flies in, it oviposits, the females deposit eggs in the bark, holes in the bark, and they lay their eggs, uh, and drill a hole and lay their eggs in there. The eggs hatch, and then when after the larva, the, the beetle grubs have been feeding all summer long, uh, then they emerge and they, they saw, literally saw their way out of the bark and, and they make a hole which is the shape of their body. So they're long and they're narrow and they're, the exit holes look just like a, a D, a capital D. So here, right here, if you look on my, my notes here, I have a capital D. It's about that size, not quite so wide. These are my notes and my information comes from the Oregon Department of Agriculture. It's, it's about that, that size right there, just a little bit narrower, a little bit smaller. So it's very small. And you'll see these perfectly D-shaped exit holes in the branches of the, of the bread that have died or maybe elsewhere in the trunk of the tree. That's the second symptom. Another symptom is you, you'll see woodpecker activity. Uh, the woodpeckers are able to uh, sense the grubs, they can hear them cr uh, crawling around in there, they, uh, and they then they begin to go pecking around, especially in the dead wood, uh, for, for a meal to go after the grubs. So we don't see a lot of woodpecker activity in ash trees. So if you see woodpeckers in your ash trees, that means that there's some dead branches up there and there's probably, they're going after the grubs that are already in there. Also, we will see, uh, we will see uh, the crack, bark, beginning to crack, cracking bark, uh, big crack and, and, and begin to peel and that kind of thing on your tree. Uh, splitting or, 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 or um, cracking bark. So after your tree has been infected, that is after uh, the, not infected, but infested by the bronze birch borer, not the bronze birch borer, the emerald ash borer, it's easy to get them mixed up. Um, uh, after about two years, uh, after they've been eating around in there, so what they do is they crawl and they eat the vascular system of the tree. So right behind the bark of this tree, there is the basically the blood system of the tree. So in within about the first inch or so or less, you have you have um, it's called the it's called the um, the xylem, and it's on the just on the inside of the cambial layer. And you will have, um, that's where all the sugars and the food, the carbohydrates, the starches, the proteins, all the, the sustenance of the tree is translocated through that vascular system. And that's where the, where the uh, emerald ash borer is chewing around, literally making S-shaped galleries all over in there. And if you take a look at a tree that has been infected by that, and you strip away the bark, you cut away, you'll see all of these galleries where they're literally eating away and mining and, and blocking off the tree's ability to uptake um, food, the sugars and the food that it survives on to keep the tree alive. And that's what kills the tree. So uh, the first year, uh, there is no crown thinning. And then after the second year, after the, the insect is in there, you know, the second year, third year, somewhere in there, right in there, you'll start to see crown thinning, die back in your tree. And then after that, you'll see more and more and more crown thinning. And again, within four to six years, that tree will die. So what are your options for uh, dealing with the emerald ash borer? Well, there's nothing you can do. Uh, to prevent it, other than putting an insecticide in there, which we'll talk about momentarily. Uh, otherwise, your tree is going to die. Whole streets, whole neighborhoods, whole cities 
uh, that have street trees have lost ash trees. And you can go online, you can just go to your search engine on, your, on the internet and type in emerald ash borer and you will see hundreds if not thousands of websites and information from government sources, U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. Uh, Forestry. Um, many universities have published all kinds of articles and papers on it. Uh, it goes on and on and on. There's a lot of information out there and lots of pictures. You, will, you, you just see lots of information. So don't take my word for it. You do your own research and you decide what you want to do. But uh, you, you may want to consider saving your ash tree. I'll be honest with you, transparent. If your ash tree, let's say, is smaller than six inches in diameter or four or five inches, you might want to just consider removing it. It's still small and it's not a mature tree. Remove it and plant another type of tree in there, not, not a fraxinus or an ash tree. But if it's a larger tree that's taken, you know, 15, 20, 30 years to get to this size or larger, you might want to consider saving that tree. Why? First of all, the cost of saving the tree is less expensive than removing and replacing. What do I mean by that? The cost of removing a mature tree, you can treat a tree for 20 to 30 years for the cost of removing it. That is not, those are not my statistics. Go to, go to uh, click on some of the links that I will provide at the end of this video, and you can go to the Oregon, I think it's the Oregon Department of Forestry or Agriculture, and they actually um, have uh, research on there that you can look at, and they will, they will give you this information. But basically, as an arborist, as uh, owner of a tree service in this area for nearly 40 years, I've been working with these kinds of trees and these issues for many, many years, not the emerald ash borer, but other things. But I will just tell you, um, now nah, maybe not one this small, but a little bit larger tree than this, to remove it and to replace it. Well, let's just say to remove it and to grind out the stump. Now you say, well, why would I want to re replace it? Well, many of these trees are in uh, street trees. And I know here in Wilsonville and many other uh, areas where we work, if you have a street tree in front of your house, you need to get a permit to remove it from your local municipality, your local city. And often they require that you replace it with something else. So sometimes you can remove it, but on conditional removal, you've got to get a certified arborist report and you've got to replace it. So there's a lot of expenses. So the, to remove a, uh, let's say a tree that's maybe 20 inches in diameter, you know, about this wide, at, at about this wide, at about, uh, you know, chest height, you'll be looking and grind out the stump, you're gonna be looking at between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars to remove that tree. Plus you gotta get a certified arborist report by a certified arborist like somebody like me, which may be another couple hundred bucks. So now you're maybe up to fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars. Then you've got to replace the tree. In many cases, replace the tree uh, with another tree. So you may be looking at, uh, you know, four hundred dollars for that. So now we're up to about, you know, just under two thousand dollars. And then, according to the Oregon, I think it's Oregon Department of Agriculture, uh, their their website, the value that an ash tree or that a tree that's about 20 inches in diameter or a mature tree adds to a house uh, to, the, to, the, to the assessed, literally to the assessed value of the house is 3,100 and some odd dollars. That's in the Portland area. So what do I mean by the assessed value? A tree like this adds value to the landscaping of a, of a house. It, uh, it has aesthetic value, it has shade value, it has social value, it has value to the environment because a tree like this will produce enough oxygen for several people in a day when, it's the, when the leaves are out at least. And so trees have assessed value. And the more trees, the more value it adds to your property. So basically, the, when you take all these things into consideration, that tree is going to be costing about about over five thousand, between five thousand, fifty-two hundred, fifty-three hundred dollars, in 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 
in um, actual cost and in devaluement of devaluing of your house, the assessed value of your house, over five between five thousand and fifty five hundred dollars. And that's why we say when you take all those things into consideration, your tree can be treated for ten, uh, twenty to thirty years. Now, how do we figure that out? Well, an average tree. It only has to be treated two to th average tree, uh, or any tree, any ash tree, once every two to three years. Now, the label for the insecticide says every two years. But I was at a seminar recently uh, that uh, were they uh, brought in experts from back east, and there was the uh, the city forester for the um, city of Madison, Wisconsin, where they've been dealing with the emerald ash borer for years. And he said that they've been treating their trees once every three years with great efficacy. So, you know, the label says on the on the insecticide every two years, but that can that by based on what we have heard, it can be stretched to three years. And so the cost to treat a tree, depending, can be anywhere from two hundred to four hundred dollars, two hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on the size of the tree, and if you have more than one tree there's a quantity discount. But figure roughly $100 a tree, plus or minus. So basically, that tree can be treated every three years for 10 years, or let's say for 30 years for um, like, you know, several thousand dollars. So the value of that tree, the cost to treat it can be prolonged. And, and, ha and I'll just say this, the tree, has to be treated every every two to three years, otherwise you will lose your tree. That's the record. So it, you have to consider, do I want to invest in my tree uh, over a long period of time and be committed to that? If not, and you're willing to lose the value of the tree and, and pay the money, then remove the tree. And we do tree removal as well. Good News Tree Service in Wilsonville. We work in Wilsonville and the surrounding uh, area. But, Anyway, I'm giving you all the information so you can make an informed decision as to what you want to do. This is your tree, your decision, and I'm here to provide accurate information and to, um, to um, um, you know, that way you can make an informed decision. Now, you might want to know, are the, the, the chemicals that we use environmentally safe? Yes. I'm glad to tell you they are. These this this chemistries that have been used are um, um, very very non-toxic. They're toxic to the emerald ash borer, but they are not toxic to bees or to pets uh, or or um, or the surrounding environment. Let me explain that a little bit. The the method, the most efficacious method, where you get 99 percent survival rate on trees that have been tr treated. Let me, let me state that again. 99% survival rate on trees that have been, uh, that have been treated. We actually uh, drill holes, but we actually drill holes in the base of the tree, one every six inches, little tiny micro holes, and then we have equipment that we inject um, directly into, the insecticide goes directly into the holes, and I'll make a video on that later uh, when we actually go out and do some. This is not the time of year to be doing it. I'll talk about that in a minute. But we inject holes and the insecticide goes directly, like a, kind of like a hypodermic needle. It goes directly into the tree. So there's no spillage or no nothing on the outside, kids, pets, or anybody. It all goes into the tree. So there's no, no waste or residue that is outside the tree. That's number one. Number two, uh, emamectin benzoate is the is the um, uh, insecticide that we use. It has the lowest level of uh, a, a warning or signal word or warning label on it, so it's it's very very uh, safe to handle. The equipment is very expensive to buy the, to inject it in the tree. That's that's why tree services who have that expertise to plant healthcare will be offering this service, but um, the, the insecticide 
is a systemic. So it goes, it goes, gets sucked into the vascular system of the tree, and then gets, you know, in a matter of just a couple of weeks, it gets translocated throughout the whole tree. So then, when the emerald ash borer lands in the tree, it eats, it eats a little bit of it, and it dies. And but the nice thing about it is that the emmectin benzoate does not go into the flowers or the leaves of the tree. Now, there's something that's very important. Ash trees are wind pollinated. There are two kinds of trees or plants, wind pollinated and um, uh, animal pollinated. When I say, or pollinator pollinated, a pollinator can include a bee, butterflies, flies, um, um, beetles, moths, bats, uh, and these kinds of things. And uh, wasps, uh, all kinds of things. Bees are the main ones though. But uh, ash trees put out little flowers. But when those flowers uh, let out their pollen, the pollen is carried from one tree to another by the wind. So these are not primarily uh, a pollinator or bee pollinated trees. However, however, bees do visit them. It's not a main source of, of, of pollen and nectar for them, but they do visit them. So we want, you know, because bees get around and, 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 you know, land on things, and we don't want the bees to be affected. But the nice thing about emamectin benzoate is that they do not, the, the insecticide, and many uh, tests have been done at the university level, they do not get in, it does not get into the flower. So it's totally bee safe, pollinator safe. Now, let me give you one other warning. I was on the internet last night and I was looking up other tree services that offer this service in our area. Uh, and right now there aren't too many, but I did come across one and I don't know if it was from this area or some other area, but they advertise that they use an imidacloprid. That's a neonicotinoid and that kills bees and they said well we can we can apply it as a drench first of all a drench that's where you you mix the insecticide up in a bucket of water and you pour it around the base of the tree and i i've been doing that for years for the emerald ash borer not the emerald but the bronze birch borer but the thing about a two things there's two problems with this you can you can treat your uh, ash tree with a, a drench of emet, uh, emetochlorprid. That's the active ingredient. There's many products that have that product in it. Um, but it is, it's a neonicotinoid, which means it contains a nicotine-like nicotine substance, which is a highly effective uh, uh, insecticide. But it also kills bees. And so we don't want to put that in there because that can work its way into the flowers that the bees may visit in this this tree. So we don't want to use that. So don't hire anybody who says we're going to use um, a neonicotinoid or, or metachlorprid. That is a good insecticide for some things, but not for this. When do we want to treat the tree? The proper time to treat the tree is during the growing season. This is, we're still in the winter. This is not the time to do it. Why? Well, because you want to treat the tree when the tree has got a lot of vascular activity going on. So as the leaves are coming out on the tree, and as the tree is foliating and growing actively, that means there's a lot of water movement, uh, fluid movement up and down that tree, so it's going to pull that um, insecticide that's been injected up into the tree, and then translocate it quickly throughout the crown of the tree. So the winter, the fall, winter and spring, let's say early spring are not the time to do that. Probably from about, I don't know, April, May on through the growing season is the time to do it. So, um, and, and if you want to save your tree, um, I would call uh, Good News Tree Service right away, get on the list. We're going to have a lot of trees to do. We want to make sure we get your tree covered if you, want, if you decide that you want to save it, if you decide you want to remove it, uh, and go to that expense, call us, and we'll be happy to give you a price quote if, if you are in the area where we work. Uh, we don't work all over the place, but we work in certain areas to try to keep our costs down.
And uh, if you need to have it treated and you have any questions, please call us. Uh, our website information is on this video and you can call us or email us and we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you have. And I think we've covered everything. So with that, adios. And uh, again, this is the Tree Evangelist. We're waging holy war on the emerald ash borer. And I love insects, but I love saving my ash tree more than I love the, the, the little pest, the little invasive species, the deadly invasive species, the species that wants to, or the deadly inv invasive pest that wants to kill my ash tree. So we have to choose the lesser of two evils in this case. Goodbye, bronze uh, emerald ash borer, and let's save our tree. Adios until next time. Okay, so now we want to, I want to identify, give you some identifying signs to, to tell whether you have an ash tree or not. Ash tree, uh, when the leaves are out, this is May, so the leaves, or March, the leaves aren't out right now. That's the main identifying way, and I'll put some pictures of the ash tree leaves uh, or in this video so you can see. But right now, um, the main way is to tell by the bark. And this is what the bark of an ash tree looks like. And I'm going to show you here shortly some other trees that are just right around in this neighborhood and, and show you. But this looks a lot like um, a, a maple, uh, maple bark. But you'll notice uh, the bark is more uniform. Maple bark, I'm going to show you some here, but maple bark has more deeper ridges and it's not quite so uniform. And now let's step, step back here. Let's look at it from a distance. And you'll see that it's gray. Here we have, let's go to the sun. And it's gray, and you see the lines. The lines got a lot of kind of vertical lines. And it's real, it's not, it's, it's rough texture, but it's, it's kind of a, a smooth rough texture. It has a very distinct look to it. Uh, get a look at this crown. Get a good look at it and it does not look like a maple tree we got some maple trees around here so uh we'll show you that but it's, it's kind of branchy brushy looking and you one thing is is it it does not have well here's a leaf here's a leaf here's a leaf from the ash tree here's one that's still kind of green i'm just picking these up off the ground i don't know this is March, it's amazing, it's still green, but it's, it's over. It's definitely not shaped like a maple leaf, and it will not have Samaras or whirlybird seeds on it like this. This is from a maple tree. Let's pick up some more leaves off the ground here. This is like from a Norway or a sugar maple. That's a maple leaf. There's an oak leaf. This is a this is a pin oak, uh, either a pin oak or a scarlet oak. So you can see the difference. So you can see the difference in the leaves right there. This is an ash. That's an oak. And there's a maple. The wind is blowing. It's, a little, it's not cooperating. There you go. Okay? I'm going to walk around here look at some trees just, just surrounding this ash tree. This is a juvenile red maple here by this stop sign. And you'll notice if you zoom in, the bark is, on these juvenile trees, the bark is pretty smooth. Uh, so once they get older, then they become, uh, the, the, the furrows, there's more furrows in the bark. Okay. Here's a red maple, same as what we just looked at, but it's a little bit older. And look at the bark. It's a little bit different. It's, 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 it's a little bit lighter gray. The sun is shining on it. But it's a little bit lighter gray, and it's more of a mottled look, and it, the lines are not quite so up and down. There are up and down striations or furrows in the bark, but they're not quite so uniform. It's a little bit more like puzzle pieces. So that's a red maple. That's a very, very common street tree. Now this is a Norway maple, and uh, it's got some wood, woodpecker holes in it, but this... This is a similar kind of a thing. Uh, this tree is actually stressed. It's kind of verticillian wilt, you can see. But it, it also has a similar bark pattern as the uh, ash tree, but a little bit different. Here's the bark of an oak tree. And that's very typical of an oak tree. 
at least this type of oak tree for this age. Again, it's a little bit different. And of course this tree has, this This is a, uh, um, looks like a maybe a, a northern red oak. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us at Good News Tree Service. Thank you. Thank you.